I have a cousin Kat, who got married to Henry early this year. We weren't close as kids, she was pretty spoiled and would always brag about how much designer stuff she has, be really mean to people under the guise of just trying to help, etc. Don't go out of our way to interact with one another but I do see her at family events and whatnot and we make small talk. I'm engaged to Chris, who is a software engineer. He's co-head of his department at work with two other people, not too long ago. Chris was telling me about how they had some new employees and one of them sounded really familiar. He told me the name and I realized it was Kat's husband. Also he and Henry hadn't met face to face yet. Kat and Henry had a huge wedding, it was really nice but all she did for months was brag about how amazing her wedding was. The wedding stuff's died down now so recently she started going on about how wealthy her husband is and what a great lifestyle they have. One of my other aunts celebrated her 50th about a week ago, I went with Chris and Kat was there with Henry. We were chatting and Kat was saying how Henry has a fantastic new job that pays even more than his previous one. Henry chimed in and said that they were already planning to buy a new house. Kat asked what Chris does. I said he was an engineer like Henry and he has a good job too, but I'll admit I left out where he works on purpose. She smiled and nodded, then said it's fine, she understands that I'm embarrassed and wants to keep it quiet. So that was pretty much the end of our conversation then, when we were leaving, she pulled me aside and told me to let her and Henry know if we needed help with the wedding. Obviously I knew what she meant and it was just another dig, but I said bye and left. Literally two days later, I get a DM from Kat and she's furious, well, as much as one can be through text, that I didn't tell them that Chris was one of Henry's bosses. Henry was shocked to see him in the office and Chris made a comment tell Kat OP and me don't need help but, thanks for offering. Henry's really embarrassed and so's Kat, and she said that we made them look bad on purpose and if she knew, she'd have never made those comments. It was my duty to tell her and Henry. Chris and I had a really good laugh over this, but she sent a text out to the family group chat we have saying how she was blindsided by me. A few others said that what we did was petty and wrong. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Kat is embarrassed and also annoyed she can't brag and one-up you so she's telling you off as a way to clambore back power over you. Stand your ground and don't apologize. You can say I understand you're embarrassed but I didn't do anything wrong. If you didn't talk down to people this would never be an issue. Ignore all the whinging and people she enlists to complain on her behalf. They are all wrong. Kat and Chris are idiots. It sounded like Kat was the one bragging about the salary, not Henry. Chris could have mentioned at the family party that he worked at the same place as Henry, but he didn't. And again, it was Kat who made the catty comment to OP about helping to pay for the wedding. Where Chris elevates to idiot level is shaming Henry in the workplace, using his position of authority. Henry was never the one boasting or acting the jerk, so it seems unfair for Chris to take it out on him. Not the idiot. Should tell her maybe she should try bragging a lot less and you guys aren't that close and to let this be a lesson about gossip and trying to feel superior. But if she's embarrassed, it's her own fault because she's the one who breached your privacy by telling everyone things that aren't even her business. To the family that side with her, ask them why it's any of their business what you and your man do for a living and why do they care? It's not their business getting spread and it honestly doesn't affect them. I, 23, have two children, 5 and 3. My style of parenting is not the most popular. One main thing of mine is I do not punish my kids, I ignore bad behavior and reward good behavior, or if they're doing something wrong I simply redirect them. It works amazing for me and my children are both very well adjusted and behaved. Something else I do is give them full control over their own bodies. They decide how they want their hair, what clothes they wear, if they want to be touched or not, etc. My daughter has a shaved head and she's honestly rocking it. My parents, specifically my mother, hate this. My sister had a wedding and asked them to wear formal clothes. My daughter wore a suit and my son wore a dress, which upset pretty much everyone. My sister was thankfully okay with it, and said while she'd have appreciated my daughter in a dress, to be bridesmaid, she understood it was her decision to make, not ours. She didn't mind my son because he was flower boy and she said him wearing a dress fit the aesthetic better, so a win all round. Anyway, my mother is getting increasingly pissed off. She gets butt hurt when she wants a hug and they say no, and I don't force them to hug her. 
She continues to buy my daughter feminine clothes that get promptly donated to charity and insists on buying my son boys toys which he never uses. This has become a huge problem. She's upset because she thinks my kids don't like her, and I explained they'd like her more if she just left them alone. They can talk, they have opinions, ask them how they're feeling and work with that. Recently this has progressed into her calling me a neglectful mother. Apparently they'll never learn boundaries, which makes me laugh because she's the one who doesn't understand boundaries, but I digress. Apparently they'll never grow up and will be bullied in school, and become snowflakes. She also claims they'll become badly behaved once they grow up. I think she's being an idiot for trying to change the way I parent, and she thinks I'm driving a force between my kids and her. Am I the idiot? Edit. As for the wedding incident, I discussed everything with my sister, and we bought my daughter's suit and son's dress two months before the wedding. At first she didn't like that my daughter wouldn't be wearing a dress, but I explained some personal things to her that I will not be putting on the internet, and we came to an agreement. She still was a little upset, but said she'd rather have my daughter in the bridesmaid photos in a suit than not in them at all. By the time the wedding actually happened she seemed very happy with it and wasn't as upset as beforehand, I think she just needed time to adjust. And she asked my son to be in a dress. I was going to put him in a suit, because tiny suits are adorable, but she specifically asked, and he was very happy to wear a princess dress. Not the idiot. While the only thing that seems odd to me is the no punishment thing. Every kid has a discipline language that works for them and I applaud you for thinking outside the box to find it. The rest of these are practices that are rising in popularity among more progressive parents and teachers, especially teaching kids consent and bodily autonomy early. It doesn't seem like you're in any way abusing or mistreating your kids therefore she just doesn't like that you're deviating from the norm, and frankly that's her problem. Times they are a change in mama. The way of the future is treating kids as human beings with individual opinions and needs. I'll go with everyone's the idiot here. Yes, your mom has no say in how you raise your children and if a kid doesn't want a hug, then everyone should respect that. Also things like girls toys or boys toys aren't really that important. On the other hand it's your job as a mother to prepare your children for the real world. While it would be great, if everyone could just wear what they like without any consequences, it's simply not the world we live in. A shaved head for a girl or dresses for boys make them an easy target for other kids and other kids simply won't care that you think that it's absolutely okay. Everyone's the idiot here, because psychological studies actually show that this is not an effective way to parent. It's important that kids learn boundaries and do actually have a punishment so that they can function in the real world, authoritative style, and so that they can create boundaries for themselves when they become adults. I get that what you're doing works now but I don't feel like it's helping in the long run. Maybe your mother is just concerned about that. I, 16, have a twin sister, 16. We live with our dad and stepmom. Our dad is an essential worker so he's out working most days, leaving our stepmom. My sister's periods are bad. She's on medication to help with the flow of blood but she doesn't have any prescribed painkillers. And her cramps are bad. She can barely move and sometimes she throws up. We have some off-the-counter painkillers that my dad got for her, which helps her a little. When my sister has her period and cramps, she usually doesn't leave her room. I'm normally the only one she will let into the room since we're very close, so my stepmom doesn't fully understand how bad her cramps get. But I see them firsthand. Only my dad and stepmom know where her painkillers are as she's too unorganized and would probably lose them. Every time she has a cramp, she tells me and I go ask my dad. My dad was at work this time, so I asked my stepmom where the pills were and she started saying how my sister is such a drama queen. I didn't really have time to argue with her since my sister was in her room in pain so I ignored it and just kept asking but she wouldn't tell me. At this point I just called my dad, and he told me where they were and I got them for my sister. I could have just left it there, but my stepmom's comments really annoyed me. I went back downstairs and called her a freaking idiot because she didn't just show me where the pills were. I told her she was out of place to deny my sister her pills and have to make me call my dad when he was at work, and that she should have just shut her entitled mouth up and told me, not word for word, I cursed a lot. She told me that a girl her age is just being dramatic, and everyone has cramps so she didn't need to have the painkillers in case she became dependent. She told me she had cramps too and they went away by the time she hit 25 and she didn't use any painkillers for them. 
I told her she had no idea what she's talking about because she's never actually seen the pain my sister goes through because she never bothers to check in on her. She told me to shut my mouth because she had more of an idea about what a period was like than I did because I'm just a boy. She told me if her period was really that painful, she would have come downstairs and asked for the pills herself. I told her she could barely move from the pain so of course I'm the one who has to get them. At this point I was getting really mad, and I didn't want our neighbors to hear my yelling so I just went upstairs. I told my sister about the fight but she didn't really give me an opinion on the fight since she was half asleep. I've been thinking a lot about it and I'm very sure I'm in the right, but I don't want to act like I know everything about periods since I've never had one and she's had many. Am I the idiot for arguing with my stepmom about periods? Not the idiot. You're being an awesome brother, don't let your self-absorbed stepmother convince you otherwise. Idiocy aside, shouting at her won't get her to change her mind. It's simply ineffective, it just gets people to close themselves off and dig themselves further into their beliefs. If you want to change your stepmother's mind, try approaching the conversation with a sincere apology for, specifically and no more than, how much you overblew the situation. Then try to help her to see things, maybe with your sister's help if she's willing. You're doing an amazing job of advocating for your sister when she is unable to. It seems your stepmom is ignorant to the fact that periods can be very different depending on the person. Just because she didn't struggle with intense periods as a teen, doesn't mean it's the same for your sister. If your family has insurance I highly recommend getting your sister to a gyno appointment to see if she may be suffering from a deeper infliction. If not, then giving her pain meds will have to suffice. Keep up the good work. Your sister is lucky to have such a supportive brother. Not the idiot, as a teenager I would get terrible cramps and everyone would say that I was being overdramatic. I only realized how bad the cramps were when I gave birth naturally and the pain was much less. Good for you for standing up for your sister. I usually don't agree with yelling or cursing but in this case it was definitely warranted. Update. Let me rephrase, my sister has been to a doctor. She has a condition which makes her bleed a lot. Her first period happened when she was 8 and lasted 3 weeks. She has been prescribed tranexamic acid tablets which helps the bleeding, so her periods last 10 days now. The doctors have done many tests on her including an ultrasound. She doesn't have a cyst or anything, just really heavy bleeding. Thank you all for your concern and advice, but my dad has already taken her to the doctors. The pain meds she takes are over the counter, I thought it was off the counter. It's cocodamol. She hasn't been prescribed pain killers from a doctor, I'm not sure as to why. She has had her period for 6 years, we sort of developed a system as to how to get her pills. The tranexamic acid I keep in my room, because she needs to take them 6 times a day every day when she is on her period. The painkillers, she only takes them when she's in pain, so I don't keep them because she's not in pain for the whole 10 days. My dad keeps them somewhere else. This post made me realize that this system is a bit dumb, so I now have both the painkillers and the tablets in the same place with me so I don't have to ask anymore. Yes, I could have not started an argument. That was on me, I'm the one who escalated things. In the heat of the moment I was disrespectful to my stepmom, but I still stand by what I said, although I should not have sworn and yelled. I told my dad what happened tonight, so now he's having a serious sit-down discussion with her, and he's siding with me. He was very angry when I told him what happened as he too knows how much pain my sister is in. They're talking right now. My fiancé and I have been dealing with a conflict with my parents for just over a year now. My fiancé is on the autism spectrum, so sometimes has difficulty with social etiquette, relationships, body language etc. My family has been aware of this for years, even before we started dating. They take a lot of issue with him, even back when we were in high school. Him and my dad argued about the name of a restaurant and my dad called him an arrogant idiot for insisting he was wrong. More recently, an incident occurs where my fiancé tries to have a discussion with my parents about a book that his mom, who is a parenting author, just released. My dad felt offended by this and thought that my fiancé meant they were no good at parenting. He went on to yell at the both of us, swearing and calling my fiancé names including idiot, which he took offense to given his diagnosis. My father knows this. They both sort of didn't address it again but we asked for an apology. We did not receive it. Rather, we got several texts that were aggressive in nature from my dad, 
and guilt trippy messages from my mom to just move on from it. A few weeks ago, my sister made a post on social media holding her friend's baby. My fiancé commented jokingly is it yours? Now, I know it was a joke and sometimes he doesn't understand that jokes can have wrong audiences and jokes can be badly timed. My parents didn't give him that grace and sent us messages about how his behavior seems to be reckless and potentially dangerous and the comment was shameful. My mom's message said they did not give their blessing for my engagement. My father's text said the same thing but also included are you really trying to tell me that man with all his mental deficiencies is really good for your life? That's a tough sell my dear. I chose not to respond because I felt like it was aggressive. Today I sent a message to my mother to convey my thoughts and make some things clear to her. In it I said that if they didn't give their blessing, they shouldn't expect an invitation to our wedding. In some ways I feel unsure about this. My sister recently told me that I'm being disrespectful to them and I should be grateful that they gave me a great life. I know the whole saying family is family but I can't help but wonder, where's the line? When is it okay to say no, you won't put up with it anymore? Am I the idiot for saying they won't be invited? Everyone's the idiot here. Your parents are major idiots. Though I don't think being on the spectrum is an excuse to do and say whatever without having to deal with consequences. People may be offended by incorrect social cues, and if that happens, maybe those people do deserve apologies. But your parents are way past that. They've chosen to treat you this way and side against you. Unfortunately, they don't deserve to be in your life. Everyone's the idiot here. I sure you are just highlighting the most negative parts of your parents to justify not inviting your parents to your wedding. They seem to have concerns regarding your fiancé that may or may not be unfounded. It doesn't sound like they were ever bad parents to outside this issue with your fiancé. If your parents are willing to shallow their pride and attend your wedding you shouldn't stop them. Personally, I feel like all you had to say was they didn't give their blessing on the engagement. If they don't want you to marry him then why would they want to go to the wedding? With all the crap talking on top of it though. Like seriously, screw them. Family's not blood. They're not treating you like family so why should you treat them like they are?